Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at CPA questions that cover topics that could be asked about the balance sheet. The balance sheet is an important topic on the CPA exam as well as accounting classes if you're taking intermediate accounting. So it's very important to understand the component of the balance sheet and how these components interact with each others. But before I start, I would like to let you know if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. No, I don't replace your CPA review course. You can keep your CPA review course if you are studying for your CPA. I can be a useful addition. I can add to your CPA exam score 10 to 15 points by explaining the material differently, by showing you how to approach the problem, by expanding your knowledge. This way you will gain more confidence on the exam day and be able to use your CPA review course much, much more efficiently. Your risk with me is one month of subscription. Try me. If you don't like it, you cancel. If you keep it, your potential gain is passing the exam. Many people have used it and they succeed I hope you do. And my courses are mirror image of your CPA review course, so you can follow very easily between your course and my course. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam or actually not doing on the CPA exam. I do have also resources for other accounting courses, especially intermediate accounting, if you're studying for your intermediate accounting. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And on LinkedIn, you can view some of the people that used my system, used my resources to succeed on the CPA exam. Please like this recording, share it with other, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at the first question. When a company sells land for cash and recognizes a gain of 25,000, what would happen? So we are giving four answer choices. My strategy on the CPA exam you should be able, for the majority of questions, you should be able to eliminate two choices immediately. In a sense, if you have a basic understanding of the information, you should be able to, 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 to eliminate two choices. So let's see what can we eliminate here immediately, okay? If we have a decent understanding of the material, okay? You can only do so if you really understand the basics. If you understand the basics, and I'm going to show you what I mean in a moment, I'm going to illustrate this. Hopefully, I, I will illustrate this in every exercise or every question. So this way, you, I, you know, you'll get the idea. What do I mean by basics? Okay. A, its asset test ratio will decrease. B, its current ratio will decrease. Now, if you know anything about those two ratios, in a sense, they're very similar to each other. What does that mean? If something happened to the current ratio and the current ratio goes down, most likely the asset test ratio will go down. So if A is a possible answer, B should be a possible answer. If B is a possible answer, A should be a possible answer. Okay? We know that we sold it for cash. We know for a fact that cash went up also. Another way to look at it, cash went up. Cash is a current asset. Well, if cash is a current asset and nothing happened to our liabilities, Okay, so if anything, if anything, if anything, which is, it's not even true here, current ratio should go up because we have more cash and we did not, and if our current liabilities stay the same, it should increase. So immediately, as long as you know this information and you can process it real quick, I'm done. I'm done with A and B. I'm down to 50-50. Now, 50-50 is C, a debt to equity ratio decrease, or D, it cannot be determined from the given information. So simply put, can you find out from this information whether you can, whether all that you have to find out now, whether debt to equity ratio will decrease, okay? And uh, I would look into C, and why, why would I look into C? Because I have a gain. A gain, remember, the gain will increase your income, which in turn increase your equity. So there's some logic to this C answer, but what you should do quickly when you are giving those, what happened to these ratios, if this happened or if that happened, immediately, Put down some numbers. Let's assume debt to equity ratio debt was one hundred thousand, and equity was one hundred thousand before this transaction. We know after this transaction, what happened is that was not affected. We are not told anything about that. That's that, and we know that the twenty-five thousand was added to equity. The debt to equity ratio goes down. Yes, it did, because why we have more less in the numerator than the denominator. So the answer will, you know, it's going to go down. So if this was 100 divided by 100 equal to a 1, 100,000 divided by 125,000, it's going to be less than 1. It did go down. I will go with C. But again, 
I'm, I'm going over this information very, you know, very, very quickly. But on the exam, it should take you, I would say, 20 seconds to eliminate A and B. And you're down to 50-50. Whether it's C or D, you can try to find out whether it's C or D. Okay? Let's take a look at this question. What would Adam report as total shareholders' equity? So they're asking about... The reason I ask the the end... I, I ask the question first because you are giving a lot of numbers. When you are giving a lot of numbers, you could be asked many questions. So read the question first. So we're looking for Adam's shareholders' equity. Listed below are year-end account balances. So Adam heard his name and he's, he's joining me now. Listed below are year-end account balances taken from the records of Adam stores. What would be the Adams total shareholders equity? Simply put in this question, we are trying to find out what is the equity. Okay. And here it's the, the, they could be giving you this questions in many different, uh, in many different uh, scenarios, but here they're giving you the account with their balances. So you have to know which one are the, which one are the equity accounts. So basically we can go through the, we can go through the list and hopefully you know that paid in capital is equity. Uh, a retained earning is equity. So I'm just picking the equity accounts. You have to know this. You have to basically know which one are the equity account. And let's see what else. Uh, what else? What else? Dividend payable. Common stock. Common stock is equity. And I don't see more than those three accounts. So if we take 485 plus 15 plus 308, and that's going to give us 808, and the answer well, will be B. So the answer is B. Let's take a look at this question. If a company records cash received for services to be provided in the future with a debit to cash and a credit to service revenue, how will this error affect net income for the current period? Well, what does that mean? It means you receive cash for services to be provided in the future. So you debited cash, let's assume $10,000 for the sake of illustration, and you credited service revenue, $10,000. What would happen? Well, under those circumstances, I have more revenue. I have more revenue because the correct entry would have been debit cash, credit unearned service revenue. Therefore, is it not possible? Yes, it is possible. Net income, so it's affecting net income. So we have net income in all three answers. Net income will be correct. It will not be correct. It will be either too, too high or too low. And hopefully you would know if you have more revenues, your net income will be too high. Therefore, the answer is C. Let's take a look at this question. Adam Corporation trial balance included the following account balances at December 31st, 2021. So you have to be careful about the date here. And they're asking us here to determine the the, um, I, I did not put the question here, but the question is, can you determine current liabilities? So which which of these we have a bunch of liabilities and we want to know which one are the current liabilities. Accounts payable. Is accounts payable current liability? Hopefully we know this. Accounts payable is current liabilities. 25,200. Bonds payable due 2030. Well, from the date due 2030, it will not be a current liability. Salaries payable. Yes, salaries payable are accrued liabilities. Those are current liabilities. Notes payable due 2022. Well, let's take a look at the date. We're looking from December 31st, 2021. Count 12 month. Is this due within 12 months? Yes, it will be another 20,100. Therefore, if we add those up, so we are looking at 400. And the answer with 400 is D. So this is how I would do it once I know that's the answer. So the answer is D. So current liabilities is 61,400. Now you could be asked about what are the long-term liabilities. Make sure you know the, the difference between current liabilities and non-current or long-term liabilities. Let's take a look at this question. Recent financial statement data for Adam Company is shown below. What is Adam's debt to equity ratio? So we're asking about what is debt to equity that's the question so we have to find Five. out what we have to find out what is the debt to equity so for so we have to find out that we are giving total debt here so we are giving that 575 and we are giving equity we are giving equity 498 now this this question is pretty straightforward and 
although it's straightforward, you have to understand that you don't have to memorize, for example, a ratio like debt to equity. Debt to equity is that divided by equity. Just look at the ratio. Now, you want to make sure you understand what does it mean is 1.15. Now, although this is the answer, I can ask you for this question, what is return on asset? Return on asset. Can you answer that question? I can ask you this question is what's the return on equity? What is return on asset? Generally speaking, the return is net income divided by asset. Good. We have net income here. And guess what? We don't have asset. Can we find asset? Of course we can. If we have debt and equity, assets equal to debt plus equity. The reason I went this problem to show you that from this information, you can find assets. And once you find assets, you could be asked so many different questions about this data. But if they told you what is return on asset, you'll be saying, I don't have my assets here. How can I find assets? You can find assets if you're giving debt and equity. Remember, assets equal to debt plus equity, which is liabilities plus equity and based on this question i can ask you five this i will say five to ten different ratios uh to uh, uh, to answer okay anyhow again as i end every time i want you to take a look at my website farhatlectures.com again i don't replace your cpa review course i can help you get better at preparing for the exam your risk is 30 dollars a month Try it. If you don't like it, cancel. If you like it, keep it. I helped many people in the past. I can help you. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.